today i am going to discuss uh, real lecture 7 on intervals by dr p ramlu head department of mathematics mbs government arts and science college mahum nagar finite sets before going to discuss uh, intervals uh, why linked class yesterday already we discussed uh, about the bijection functions so by using bijection function i want to define finite sets earlier i already discussed in lecture 2 uh, how we can define this uh, kind of sets so now i am going to discuss finite set what is finite set a set uh, s is said to be finite set if uh, there exist a bijection map of f s equal to 1 2 3 up to so on for fixed and belonging to n see be careful how it is happen right if there exist to bijection map between f s to n f s to so some set right if there exist bijection map between this set 1 2 up to so on right uh, you can take that to oh, n here for fixed n what is the bijection map bijection map nothing but uh, if i take uh, so this map okay so this i'm taking this is set oh, it call be some b okay i'm drawing this set as b so uh, this is b yeah, this is S. I want to discuss about the uh, bijection map of uh, this set S, right? How do we discuss uh, if there exists bijection map between S to N, then is for fixed N belongs to N, here N is natural number, N belonging to N is natural number. So for N is fixed here, okay? So, what is bijection map in F is set to bijection? If it exists both 1, 1 and 1, 2. Okay. When can be possible the bijection between F S to N? The number of elements of A and B are exist. Now, the number of elements of S and B are equal. Then only bijection map is exist. Why? Because uh, distinct elements have distinct images. So, if every element have free domain, so these images have Three images. So in this case, what can happen? It must be number of elements of number of elements is equal. Number of elements of S or number of elements of B is or equal. So for that, one, two, up to n. Okay. So this uh, S is depend on this set for fixed and belongs to n. This contains so n number of elements. This also contains n number of them. So if it exists, bijection mapping between S to B, then we say that F is, and then S is finite set. So if it has 100 element, there exists bijection map between S to 100. That means the number of elements are finite. Therefore, we can say that S is finite set. So a set S is a finite set. If there exists to bijection map from S to 1 to N. For fixed n belongs to n. Simply example, I am taking that s is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, n equal to 5. So that means uh, n equal to, if I take like this, uh, here s has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This set I am discussing about this set. For existing bias map, how many elements it must have? It has the same element of number of elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. This set also must have 5 elements for existing Bayesian map. Why we have distinct element have distinct images. Distinct element have distinct images. If I take a uh, uh, if I take other thing, uh, what 
Mungkin ada dia kalau If I add extra some other than six element, right? For existing by addition map, I'm adding this element here. Distinct element have distinct images, so but uh, one one it is okay. We're on to this does not element have pre image, that's why so this uh, must have only five elements. That's why so we can say that uh, Uh, that's why this is bijection this is finite set okay so uh, this is finite set if i take s is equal to a b c d not only can take that oh, s is equal to 1 2 3 4 you may take that s is equal to a b c d also that means uh, you can draw a bijection bank between s2 1 to n only here n equal to 4 s also so a b c d equal to n equal to 4 that means so uh, there exist bijection map between a b c d to 1 2 3 4 so this is happen right s is equal to a b c d and n is uh, this set equal to 1 2 3 4 only if i take s is equal to minus 1 minus 2 3 minus 3 what is the bijection map in between we have to find uh, a set which has contained element 3 1 that means so uh, my set is 1 2 3 only that means s is bijective uh, there is a budget map between S2 and If I take S is equal to A1, A2, A3, that is A100, N equal to 100 only. That means so there is a budget map of this two, 1, 2 up to N. So if it exists, so simply we know that the number of elements of the set is finite. Uh, we can say that it is finite set, but in understanding, but not definition. This is the actual definition, right? If there exists any budget map between S2, 1, 2 up to 100, N, then we say that it is finite set. In finite set, a set S is not set, not finite, finite set. If I set S is not finite set, then S is called infinite set. Or simply can say the set is said to be finite, infinite set, if there does not exist a bijection map between F, S2, 1, 2, up to N for fixed angle. There, Unable to exist by this map between S2 and Rune, right? So you can take that S is equal to N, okay? If S is equal to take N to set, uh, we are unable to find uh, by this map between two, this two, this set. Why? Because N has some infinite number of element to here, only finite number of elements. So that's why up to N we have by this map to exist, but uh, after some element uh, we are unable to find uh, by this map. That's why n is natural number set n is infinite set i simply say that if s is infinite or so finite uh, not finite then you say that s is infinite set otherwise so uh, if s is not finite we can say that s is infinite simply other way also okay i'm simple i'm taking that uh, n is equal to 1 2 3 up to so on that has n it has infinite number of elements it has uh, infinite number of elements see 1 2 3 up to that has seven elements i'm writing here Suppose I am taking n is equal to 10 to the power of 1000, you can take that, 10 to the power of 1000, up to this element goes to this, but uh, here we have other element or unable to find map, okay. So, we may make get map, but, so 1, 1 is lost, that means if all element goes to this element, uh, but uh, for different element, I must have distinct element, distinct element I must have, uh, what I am doing here, 1 to 10 to power of 1000, you can have to 10 to power 1000, uh, this element my mapping, after that all element goes to, you can draw to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever maybe, it is function, but what happen after this stage, okay, 1, 2, 3, dash up to 100, after the stage we are unable to find by this map, that's why it is not uh, finite set, that means it is infinite set, simply can observe here, uh, see, I am taking that uh, this set. Suppose uh, I am taking uh, a set n. n has uh, some elements. n is equal to 1, 2, 3, up to so on. 1, 2, there, there, there. So you can take that, uh, this element. So other element uh, has finite number of elements, right? Up to 1, 2, 
that add as you can take that oh, 10 power of 400 10 power of 1000 what are you okay from 1 to 10 power of 100 we are able to get we are able to get uh, 1 goes to 1 2 goes to 2 10 power 1 goes like this after that this element Oh, yeah, we may give possible to give the object uh, map to these elements but uh, it is a function no doubt but one one property is missing this one has one element oh, 10 power of 100 plus one also has same image different element have same image that's why it is not one one so it is not one one so therefore it is a function the set n is the set uh, n is not uh, bijection function. That's why there does not exist bijection function. We say that it is infinite set. Similarly, you can observe that uh, W, Z, Q, and R are also infinite sets. So, S is equal to 1 by N also. is also infinite set. Why? Because we can draw already mm -hmm. discuss about the set. Uh, it has element 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to so on, 1 by n, 1 by n, n is infinite, right? Here, yeah, this set has infinite number of elements, so similarly, you can say that this also has infinite number of elements. So, if you are unable to find any position map between these two, uh, some 1, 2, 3, up to n, for fixed student belongs to n, that's why it is infinite, right? What about empty set? Okay, what about empty set? Empty set by construction, we are taking that uh, by the uh, it has does not have any elements, right? If I take that uh, this empty set, uh, if I take pi is equal to zero one uh, empty set, it does not have any elements. We are able to say that uh, the number of elements is zero. That's why we are considering that this function is uh, this set is so uh, uh, empty set is finite set. It is an finite set well, because it does not have any element. But uh, according to definition, we are unable to find any bijection map between these two. Right? That's why, so by construction, uh, we are taking that the empty set is finite set. Not every finite set is bounded set. Already we discussed about the bounded set in last class. So every finite set is bounded set. Pi is also bounded set. Why? Because pi is empty set, it is also bounded set. So Archimedean property. Archimedean property right Archimedean properties is that oh, if I take any real numbers to number x and y belongs to r and I am taking that x is power 0 then there exists to oh, any integer n such that n is greater than y if I take any number it may be larger and larger you can take any number which is greater than x x is uh, I am taking that x is any positive okay uh, you can take the y is any number which is greater than n Okay, yeah, right. suppose x is equal to 100, you can take that y is equal to 10,000. Okay, y is equal to, you can take that 10,000, right? So, that means so, y is greater than x, here x is my positive. Then I want to make that, uh, if I multiply to this number n, n uh, x with respect to n, we will get uh, which is greater than, that means so, uh, here is y equal to 10,000, right? x is equal to 100. If I multiply this, uh, any, if I take n equal to 100, 1000, uh, we will get that 1000 into uh, 100 equal to 1 lakh. That means 1 lakh is greater than y. So, this is beautiful property. It says by Archimedean. So, we are calling that is Archimedean property. Simply you can observe that x comma y belongs to r and y belongs to x comma y belongs to r. And x greater than 0, then there is a positive integer n such that n x greater than y. So, uh, dedicated axiom. <coughs> let uh, l comma u are two subsets of real numbers l not equal to empty set uh, it is not equal to empty set and u not equal to empty set second condition is l union u is equal to r third condition is if x less than l and y less than y is in u which implies x less than y then l has greatest element u has least element that is there exists to an alpha such that x less than alpha or alpha less than y. 
okay in this clearly observe that oh, radicand axiom let oh, l comma u are two subsets of real number first of l not equal to one is and u not equal to five l union u is equal to r l union u is equal to you can take that u this is real number i'm dividing this set then i take this set is l and this is u if i take x belongs to u and y belongs to u then what happen x is less than y x is less than y then if it is happen then l has greatest element to u has least element to that means there exist to some alpha here such that x less than alpha and alpha less than y so you can simply observe that uh, okay so i am drawing again uh, the dedicated axiom says that uh, this is real number i am taking here so i want to divide a set okay i am taking two sets l u so from here to here i don't know about the now first one eight years i don't me we were and dividing this set okay up to this uh, l up to this u that means so uh, l okay is non empty so l is non empty first one and uh, u also is non empty first condition so that means so uh, it has some elements second question is has taken that uh, l union or sorry l union u l union l union u equal to so <coughs> if i take any element x here that means x belongs to l if i take any element y belongs to u so x belongs to l y belongs to u then there exist then what happen x is less than y which implies what happen if i take x equal to l y belongs to u that means x is less than y so then what happen then l has if i take l Uh, that means uh, l has uh, greatest element to uh, u has least element. that means uh, if i take x here that means e in this part what happen this has greatest element so that means greatest element nothing but uh, supremum belongs to this member of s otherwise you can take that or you can take that uh, u u may has least element uh, that means uh, either x belongs to l or y belongs to l if i take any element here x be either x belongs to u or y belongs to u x belongs to l i know that means supremum if supremum belongs to l that is x belongs to l if infimum belongs to l, that means y belongs to l so uh, third then what happen there exists some alpha there exists some alpha such that x less than alpha oh you can take that uh, i and you may take that uh, alpha less than y alpha less than y x less than alpha or alpha less than y so this is dedicant axiom property which has been explained by dedicant right so this is beautiful property by is dual number we have discussed with this thing okay dedicant axiom and dedicant is finally if a completeness axiom if it is dedicant axiom property satisfy then it has so completeness axiom property also satisfy okay Mm, you can say complete exam have if i only dedicated exam complete exam already we discussed in lecture 4 okay density property so beautiful uh, density property why because it is useful we uh, you can use it so many times in our class so, uh between any two real numbers uh, there exist infinite rational and irrational numbers so, between any two real numbers there exist to infinite rational and irrational numbers or simply that uh, uh, you can take that only rational numbers also or you can take that irrational numbers between any two real numbers there exist irrational number infinite rational number so sometimes we made that between any two real numbers there exist irrational numbers okay between uh, other way you can say that between any two rational numbers there exist to 
infinite irrational numbers. So I may use that between n to real number there exist infinite rational and irrational numbers. I am taking some books we may refer that to between any two rational numbers. So between n to real be careful. I am writing that between any two rational numbers there exist infinite and infinite irrational numbers. If I take other way also between any two irrational numbers there exist infinite rational numbers. Okay, how it is? So uh, yeah, this is my real line. This is my real line. So this is my real line. I'm taking that. Uh, uh, for suppose uh, this is my two real numbers. A or B. We can take that A comma B. Or we can take that. Uh, or some other name, we can name it anything x and y. Okay, if you know it like that, x and y belong into right. I'm taking this so x comma y or two numbers. So, this real numbers, real are the bottom. If these are you can take that between any two real numbers that exist, too, right? Infinite rational numbers, right? Not only you can take, take that here, smaller and smaller, nearest to this, right? If you take y here, okay, between these two real numbers, so infinite rational number. You may take the smaller and smaller, they are unable to define distance, right? You can take that here. So this you can call this x. Okay. Otherwise, you can take that one, x one. Oh, you could, this is my y one. So between these two relevant small, there is unable to find distance. So these distance also we are getting infinite rational and irrational numbers. So this is beautiful statement by uh, okay density property. This is okay. Uh, other way, other definition also Okay. If I take this real numbers, next number unable to say that either this is rational number or irrational number. So this is very crucial. If I build that. This is rational numbers, next number unable to say that whether it is rational number or irrational numbers in real numbers, right? So between if I take x comma y is two rational numbers, between two rational numbers there are infinite rational number irrational numbers. If I take x comma y is irrational number, between two irrational numbers there exist infinite rational numbers. So this is a statement okay, uh, that's why it is called uh, density. So this is statement is called density property. Okay, so we can easily understood why it happened, right? So now we have discussed about the intervals. Now I am going to discuss uh, about the interval. Let uh, S be a subset. Let S be a subset of R. Let S be a subset of R. A comma B belongs to R, and A less than B, and X belongs to R. So, comma A less than X less than B implies X belongs to S. Let a subset of R. List up. I am taking that A comma B belongs to R, and A less than B. So, and x belongs to R, comma, A less than, x less than, B, which implies x belongs to S, then we say that S is called an interval. So, that means uh, every real number between A and B, which belong into a set, that set is called an interval. Any real number, between A and B, which is oh. okay. Uh, I'm this okay. I'm taking this one, two. Okay, one, two. I'm taking that. This is one. Okay, um, real numbers. Uh, this is my real numbers. 
is this real number i am taking that oh yeah this is a comma b okay a comma b two real numbers i am taking that oh yes i am taking this set this is my set i am denoting this points are a comma b between any two real numbers sorry between this numbers so uh, i'm taking that x if a uh, l is then x l is then x uh, implies if uh, if i take any number between a and x uh, which x belong to s x belongs to s we say that s is an interval so clearly can i say that this is my real number s be a non empty set of r and a comma b belongs to r that means a less than b here i'm taking b is greater than when more points if you take any uh, any points on the real number so right side will increase that's why a less than b comma x belongs to r and a less than x less than b if i take any x x real number only not complex number i'm taking that x in real number L is less than B implies X belongs to S. So then we say that S is an interval. That means any number between this A and B, which is entirely containing this set only, which is so total numbers belong to S. So if it happen, it is called an interval. So I want to show that uh, 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 whether this S is interval or not. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm taking one comma two. So one comma two open one comma two nothing but open a comma b. This nothing but this can denote denoted as open a comma b. We will destroy it. Uh, this set is denoted by one comma two. So that means all elements between uh, one comma two are belonging to this. So if I take uh, this one comma two does not belong to this set. Yeah. Same. If I take this set. One comma two also belong into this set, and uh, between any real two real numbers also belong to this set. This is an interval, and this also an interval. If I take that uh, s is equal to other set, I am taking that one, two, three, four, and five. Whether this set interval or not. So we can take that. Uh, this is my real number. Okay, uh, you may choose that any number between one comma two. Oh, uh, uh, this is one. Here one, it is five. Can take that. Uh, here two, three, four. I'm drawing like this. This one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is S. You can take that any real number, one comma two, one less than five. You can take that. Uh, if I take two, two belongs to S. Three, you will have four. Example. If I take two point five, right? Two point five belongs to less than uh, one less than two five less than five. So this is my x. This is my x. One less than two point five less than b, but two point five does not belong to S. Therefore, S is not an interval. S is not an interval. so this why these are intervals and this is not an interval it is not interval because one comma two here yeah, there are rational real numbers that means uh, if i take any uh, two real numbers between one comma two there exist to infinite rational and irrational number that number does not belong to this set that's why by density property we can say that s is not in uh, interval if i take natural number set also if i take natural number set also so natural number set like that is similar we can take the 1 2 3 4 there is gap between between 1 comma 2 there exist infinite rational line rational number that number does not belong to this n that means if if we set it any set a set b interval between uh between uh, this sets between 1 comma 2 or uh, 2 comma 3 3 comma 4 there exist infinite rational and rational number that element does not belong to n so that's why 
it is not interval. That means our definition is that if I take any number between one ka any uh, in this set, that whole entire belongs to that set only. Otherwise, it's not interval. So this is not interval. Similarly, W also not interval, and Z is also not interval. But because there is gap between zero and one, that number does not belong to Z. So Q. Oh, it is uh, Q. Q looking like uh, so. What are the Q elements? Right, uh, this is Q. Or oh, this is real number. I'm taking that. This whether Q is open set or not, and uh, I'm not uh, not open set. I'm this is interval. Either interval or not. Q element is look like uh, so. I want to take other pen. No. Uh, elements of Q looking like uh, okay, uh, okay. Okay, you can observe that elements of uh, Q is like this. element of uh, q is uh, yeah we can easily okay now we can easily understand uh, why because so it is smaller for this my real number so I'm taking that uh, this uh, smaller and smaller. So in this, these are the rational numbers. Uh, sorry, rational number Q. The that means red color numbers are Q. Whether the set is uh, okay, this relational number set or whether the set is uh, op set uh, interval or not. If I take these two red numbers, what is our property says that uh, these two numbers I am taking that. I feel that these are two are uh, relational numbers only. Between two relational numbers, between two relational numbers, there exist two infinite relational and irrational numbers. Rational number belonging to Q, but uh, irrational number does not belonging to Q. That's why Q is not an interval. Q is not an interval. So be careful. Between any two real number, there exist to infinite rational and irrational number. If I take two smaller and smaller elements, uh, these are two different number. Our density property is that between any two real numbers, there exist to infinite rational and irrational numbers. Because of that reason, this is not an interval. Yeah, if I take the Q, so okay, or or is an interval? Why? Because uh, if I draw here, or if I take the draw, why it is interval? This is real number. You can say any number. Okay, our definition is that. Uh, okay, so I'm taking this. Is the S is same s equal to r here be careful of the rear s equal to r s is equal to real number set so this a comma b a comma b belongs to uh, r and a less than x less than i'm taking x here a less than x less than b okay then what happened a less than x less than b which implies x is belonging to r or not X belongs to R. Why? Because this entire number R belonging to all numbers are belonging to R only, real numbers only. If I take any number between A and B, that element of belonging to R, now not only can take that anywhere, you know, between any uh, two real numbers will belong to real numbers for today. That's why R is an interval. No. Okay, types of open interval, uh, type of intervals. I am discussing uh, open interval.
so it is uh, look like uh, same definition so i'm uh, explain to you let a comma b or belongs to real numbers a less than b then the set x belongs to says that a less than x less than b is called an open interval it is denoted by open a comma b so that means a open a comma b equal x belongs to says that a less than x less than that means all elements of the form is this real number this a comma b a comma b is there between two this number so are uh, belonging to this set but a comma b does not belong to that so this is called open interval it is denoted by open a comma b for example i am taking the one comma two one comma nothing but already we discussed this kind of sentence but i am not mentioned the interval here one comma two if i take one comma two that means all element belong between one comma two or belong into this set but one comma two does not belong to this set therefore open one comma two this is o minus one comma one let me same other example only yeah here yeah. 9053245 you can take that this element this was open interval but because all element between this and this set it belongs this but uh, 9053245 does not belong to this set close interval a comma b belongs to r and a less than b less than then the set x belongs to such that a less than r equal to x less than m equal to b is called uh, an closed interval it is denoted by closed a comma b so that means closed a comma b equal to x belongs to r such that a less than r equal to x less than r equal to b which implies open a comma b right this is closed a comma b so belonging to r 1 comma 2 equal to x plus r there 1 less than r equal to x less than r equal to this is an example of right that means uh, the closed interval denoted by closed a comma b that nothing but x plus r there a less than r equal to x less than b that means this set contains uh, a and b and between number of a and b so this is denoted by so in this set contains a and b and between number also belonging to this set this is closed closed interval so this are the example of closed interval left to close and right open interval left to close the door and right open interval. or you can do that semi closed or semi open interval you may call anything so for same definition let a comma b belongs to r a less than b then the set x belongs to r is that a less than r equal to x less than b is called and semi closed door so semi closed or can the left to closed or right to open interval okay it is denoted by so left to closed to right open so that we have this set is denoted by x plus r zeta a less than r equal to x less than b so this set containing a up to b but b does not contain this set too so same example just a symbol is actually denoting like this so that means this set does not contain any left element too so same left to open right closed interval or semi open interval maybe semi closed or sometimes you can that semi closed or semi open now i am mentioning here semi open interval that means so left to open that means left is open and right is closed right is closed that's why a less than b belongs to r and a less than b then the set x belongs to r such that a less than x less than r equal to b is called to semi open interval it is denoted by open a comma b therefore a comma b equal to x plus r such that a less than x less than r equal to b so uh, similar example left side left element a does not belong to this set but right element belongs to this set that's why i'm calling left to open right closed one comma two one comma two equal to x plus r such that one less than x less than r equal to uh, which implies uh, okay, can take here is simply that this set containing one no does not contain one and it continues two and between two and any number between one comma also contains this set that semi open so similar example kind of that infinite open intervals infinite open intervals so the set okay and you know that the set x plus or x less than a is called infinite open interval that means <coughs> this set has c a this real number so you can take that uh, okay you can take that this uh, real number so so infinite open interval so uh, i'm taking this c so a so uh, that means this is minus infinite element too, and this is plus infinite so up to this set right i'm writing that uh, you have take x element uh, between this and this that means minus infinite is less than x is less than a so i'm denoting this set such that x belong to okay okay 
So x belongs to us as that minus infinity x less than a. Between these two numbers, we call that infinite open rule. You may take that uh, other way also. A, so a to infinite. That is a less than or equal to a less than x less than infinite. So, okay, we may take uh, this uh, other thing. Or oh, sometimes we may take that minus also, right? Minus so a minus a, right? This also. Other way, other open rule also, you can take that simply, you can take that. Uh, uh, this is real number. Sorry. Real number, that means this is minus infinite. This is plus infinite. So, or equal to, how to write here? Minus infinite, comma plus infinite. This also we can write. This is also uh, open, infinite open interval. So, that's why, yeah, this is infinite open interval. This is also infinite open interval. That means you contain from here to here. Uh, in set denoted like this uh, or equal minus infinite this to this whole entire set this is nothing but real numbers so this also infinite open intervals you may write in place of a one more in place of you can take that this same set or in place of a substituting this okay so these are the infinite open interval we have discussed this one open interval this left two and this right uh, open interval other thing is total this is real line. So these are the infinitely open intervals. Race. The following sets are called race. The following sets. See what is the difference minus a less than real nothing but oh, it is look like uh, <coughs> of uh, same as well as right. Uh, it is uh, look like that. Uh, race realize or uh, release from the sun okay so what is ray right and same i'm denoting same set okay i'm denoting same set oh. here i'm taking strictly earlier i'm not the, the, the set does not containing a here my set containing here see observe that here my the set does not containing a here my set containing a i'm taking that these so here yeah, we know that uh, this is minus infinite this is uh, plus infinite i want to denote this set i want to denote this set how we, if i take x here how to denote this set uh, okay x belonging to or such that x less than infinite for x less than a, one way. That means x is less than a. So here I am taking that this a also belongs to this x less than or equal to a, one way. So uh, other thing is uh, how to denote here. Other way is uh, x belong to r. So is that here I am taking that minus infinite. x less than a so it is not by minus infinite a yeah. yeah, so it is closer to the left side is closer to why because a included this side this is a ray so how does it look like see uh, why we are calling ray here uh, so this is look like ray okay so this is left ray okay so if i take that this is right ray okay so this is left ray left ray right ray so that means so here this it is so minus infinite Yeah. This set is phase first, right? Okay. A to plus infinite. So this is set is uh, A comma infinite. So 
so this is left to this is right way okay uh, this set how it is apply same as the explanation is that x to greater than equal to a x to greater than equal to a of this set here we can write that a less than r equal to yeah okay a less than r equal to x less than infinite so these are called rays okay uh, these are equal to for example in place of a you can write 1 minus 1 water maybe you can write that any number real number so simply uh, in place of so a yeah, you can put some numbers we will get a uh, race okay so these are the discussed about the race uh, okay uh, intervals and uh, uh, how what are the types of uh, uh, open intervals and closed intervals oh, i want to discuss that uh, other thing is uh, Yeah, what is the length of the interval? Okay. Okay. Length of the interval. So just now I'll discuss it about the intervals. What are the intervals we have found out now? This is open a comma b. Okay. Other interval is this is open interval. Other interval is closed to a comma b. Closed to a comma b. Other thing is semi open, semi closed. Okay, I am taking that anyway. I think semi intervals. I am taking that semi interval. So other thing is uh, semi closed okay or okay, semi interval or okay. This interval you have discussed. Next to uh, one other intervals are minus infinite. So a other thing is uh, a to infinite. Other thing is uh, this are infinite intervals. So other thing are race minus infinite a. So other thing is uh, a to minus infinite. Sorry, a to infinite. So here infinite. What is the length? So how to find length? So, Here A is there, here B is there. So how to find how to find length of the interval? Uh, so we may call that uh, from here to here with distance A, here to distance B. What is distance from here to here? B minus A. I want to remove distance from here to here. We will get B minus A. So that means length is uh, B minus A for all intervals here from here. Okay, these are the intervals. Length of these intervals are B minus A. What are the length of these intervals? So, for length of these intervals, so, so this is real numbers. I am taking that, uh, this is real numbers. So, A here. From here to here, length of so, this is so, minus infinite to infinite. That means so, length is infinite. Here to here, infinite. Here to here, infinite. So we are unable to find. That's why I call these are the infinite intervals. So these are the rays. So it will look like rays. That's why I are calling rays. But these are all infinite intervals. These are all infinite intervals. So that means the length is infinite. That's why we are calling infinite interval. These are the finite interval. Why? Because the length of this is b minus a. For example, I am taking that one comma two. One comma two. Okay. What is the length of interval? Length of interval is so. Uh, what is this? So uh, b minus a, two minus one. Two minus one equal to one. So length of interval is this. Okay. Uh, if I take one comma infinite, what is the length? This length of this infinite. So, so this are the length of the interval. Right. Uh, so okay. Uh, this uh, about the intervals. So, okay. Uh, I'm taking that. Uh,
so thank you for this for uh, listening this